Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Today I'm going to share with you about the topic of need. Need. I recently started working with a new counselor. She's actually a, lic a licensed clinical social worker. And I, one of the assignments that I had from my first session with her was to begin to become aware of my needs and to articulate them. And I spent quite a bit of my conversation kind of giving her my backstory and things like that. And we talked about what I wanted to focus on for our you know, goals and stuff like that for our time together. But I, I, I spent a lot of time saying that I didn't know what my needs are, like what I need. I don't know what I need. I've been going through a dramatic change, changes in my life. There's been a lot going on, for, as, as have many of us, right? And I'm like, I need to know what my needs are. And she said, I think you do know what they are. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean? And she's like, well, you've mentioned a couple of times some things that are very obvious needs that you have. And I'm like, wow. And so she suggested that when I have feelings about what I need to acknowledge it and actually say it out loud so that I can see what my needs are, what it feels like to say or articulate what I might need when I'm noticing it to say it out loud. And I thought she said something super profound here. Okay. And I want to share it with you because it's so filled with wisdom. My thought was, well, if I say what my needs are, if I know, if I know what I need, don't I then need to accept responsibility to fulfill my needs? Like, if I know what my needs are, then why aren't I living a better life that's more fulfilling or more in alignment with who I am, right? And I felt like this pressure about it. And then I said, well, if I know what I need, then I have to take action. And to me, action is like behavior change, like actual outward expression of change, like massive change, right? And she said that knowing what you need is your awareness. And that saying it, articulating it is enough of an action in itself. Just articulating it, acknowledging it, saying it is enough of an action itself. That movement and action, movement inward is the action. Like that's the accomplishment. I have never thought this. Because I go by the Maya Angelou phrase of when you know better, you do better. And to me, the key thing was the do part. Express, change, do, boom, implement. It's like, what good are you if you just talk, talk, talk? You're all talk and no action. Like that is burned in my freaking brain. Is it burned in yours? All talk, no action? I have been really, really wrestling with this idea of my personal need. And I think you can understand this because as an empath, you are also probably finding yourself in the same position where you may be in a place where you're constantly meeting other people's needs. Your whole life revolves around meeting other people's needs. You might work in customer service. You might be a teacher. You might be a nurse, a doctor. You might be a lawyer. You might be a, an accountant. You might be whatever you do for your job or career. It might very well be in service where you're helping to meet a need that someone else has. Nine times out of 10, that's true. Okay. So you actually have a career. You've made a career out of meeting people's needs. And if you're a parent, kids. And if you got kids, you got lots of needs. You got needy needers, right? And so you're not just good at meeting the needs. You're good at anticipating. You're good at trying to predict what those needs are. You are good at planning ahead. You are good at being prepared to address the needs if that they arise, even needs they have not articulated or even said they had, but they might remotely need something. So you are ready on the ready and prepared, mama. Does this sound familiar? Anybody, anybody? Mm -hmm. 
come on, you know you have that little tubby that slides underneath in between the seats in the front with the uh, sanitary wipes in there, the, the, uh, the little wipey towel things, the, the extra spoons and forks, the napkins, the paper towels, the, the whisk broom to kind of sweep up messes if it can happen, an extra baggie in case somebody has an accident or vomits in the car. You know what I'm saying, right? You got that. Why? Because you're anticipating the needs. <laughs> Perhaps past experience and relationships have given us this need to anticipate needs or to serve other people's needs or have we have been along the line probably rewarded for meeting other people's needs for anticipating them oh my gosh you not only it's not good enough just to meet the customer's needs hello concierge but you got to anticipate them and meet them before they're an issue and that's exemplary customer service and that's what gets you promoted that's what gets you to be the boss's favorite that's what gets you that that that, that bonus check, right? Or that big account or the corner office, right? It, it, you're rewarded by this. So it is ingrained within us to constantly be scanning for the needs of others, to try to interpret that, to intuit that. And sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes you're wrong about what other people need from you and just because there's a need doesn't mean you're the one that has to fix it, to meet it, address it. Sometimes somebody else's need and your awareness of their need is just to be an observer, to be part as a witness, to be a listener, to be part of the, the, the expression that they are articulating in their own awareness. They're saying it out loud and you're just watching that happen. You're not, you're not, you don't have a role. You don't have to help take action. You can just be there in the audience. So when it comes to your own needs, it would make total sense that you would have no concept of where to even begin. But you do know, I'm betting, I am betting you money that you know that your needs are not being met, that you have some needs that are not being met right here, right now. Are you hungry? When's the last time you ate? What did you eat? Did you, does your body have a need for you to eat something a little more healthy than perhaps what you ate or to eat a, a bit more frequently than you have because you're a feast or famine type, you know, because you're just so busy and you just fed everybody else but didn't have time to feed yourself or maybe you didn't make a smoothie and you never made a smoothie in your life but your body might want a smoothie instead of, you know, another cup of coffee or something. Do you know what I'm saying? So there are needs that you have that you are not paying attention to. And that if you do just sit for a moment in awareness and answer that question about what did you eat? When's the last time you ate? You might, it might give you just a little sample of the fact that you certainly can be very aware of what you need. But it doesn't mean you're gonna take action to fulfill that need because you need to eat better, you need a healthier diet, because you know you have more energy, you'll sleep better, you won't be so stressed out or anxious, et cetera, et cetera. Doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna flip that switch and change everything right now, today or tomorrow, right? But the first step is to be aware of the, your needs. And I'm gonna tell you right now, don't be scared, don't be afraid. Consider it information gathering, data gathering, research. Consider it research. Get curious about what you might need. So I know some things about myself that I need. And it was pretty easy right away to sit down and kind of think about a couple of things that I need. Once I let myself kind of relax some of the resistance about this whole concept of need, you know, and having to then deal with it, address it right away, just being an awareness state of it. It was, it was a little bit easier. So I know that I need sunshine. I need the sun. I am one of those people that is affected by seasonal affective disorder stuff. And, and when it's too cold and too dark, it is hard for me. It's hard for everyone. A lot of people are affected by that, but for me in particular. So that means I need sunshine. And therefore, some of the actions I can take to address that if I want to go into that space, which I already do because I know that I need that, it's like vitamin D and a sunlight and vacations. 
<laughs> where I can just be in warm weather, sunny weather. I know that my need for the sun isn't just to see uh, light, but it's also the warmth. It's also weather related. It's not just light related. It's weather related. It's warmth. My body needs to feel warm. I need to be warm. I love to be warm. I have blankets, soft, fluffy, cozy blankets all over the place. I have slippers and cozy socks. I, I dress in layers. I have two heaters in my greenhouse space room, space heaters that I sit with a blanket cozied up by. I love to be warm. And I know that about myself. I know it. I need that. That's a part of me that I know that I will thrive when I have that. So I need sunshine and warm weather. Okay, so I know that those are just kind of needs that I have. Okay. I also know that I need a lot of water every day. I know that when I drink more water, I feel better. And when I don't, I get Oh, ordinary. I actually get moody or crabby if I haven't had enough water. I don't just feel like headachey or what have you, but I feel tired and I feel crabby. I really do feel crabby when I don't have enough water. So um, I did already take action on that because I kind of got out of the habit of drinking water by drinking water in the morning before I have my coffee and drinking hot water because why? I love war being warm. And even when it's summer, and I bought a tea kettle. I actually bought like a, a hot water warmer just for hot water. That's it. And I have it here in my office space in my greenhouse space, my green room. And I've been using it for a couple of days and I love it. It just makes me so very happy. And it has been just wonderful. But I know that I need to drink more water. And this is one way that I'm, I am doing that. So those are just kind of two simple examples. There's other needs that I have in, in as far as relationships. And you too have needs as far as interpersonal needs, like in relationships with other people. So you might need quiet time. And that might look like reading a book, doing a journal, going on a walk, having time by yourself, totally by yourself. It might help you recharge your batteries. Maybe it's daily. Maybe it's three times a week. Maybe it's once a week, once a month. I'm not sure what it looks like for you, but maybe it's that. Or maybe like one of the common, one of the needs I see for myself in relationship and, and it could be like in regards to like a class that I'm taking or a life coach I'm working with or a, um, a client working with a client or in actual relationship, like with my spouse or significant other or my kids or my friendships, I need consistency. I need people to say what they're, say what they mean and mean what they say and follow through. Like I need people that are consistent, people that show up and are consistent. And if they can't, that they communicate that. So I need consistency and communication because that's what I do. That's where you build trust and that's where loyalty over time comes from. That's where deeper um, relationships come from because you can have deeper, meaning, more meaningful conversations when you know someone's going to be consistent for you and that you offer that energy in return as well, of course. So consistency and then communication, you know, sharing, being, being articulate as much as you can and, and just having that kind of a respectful interaction or engagement. To me, that's a basic need that I have. So those are some things, just some examples. So I want to um, share with you that I found it extremely helpful to think about the fact that identifying my needs was way less scary and I was less resistant to it. When I recognized that movement inward inside was progress that giving myself permission to be aware of and then articulate my needs didn't mean that I had to fulfill them, fix them, figure out a plan to change everything and have massive overhaul in order to be in alignment. That knowing was enough. That trying to put words and communicate that to receive that information for myself, to understand myself better, that alone was monumental movement. And that feels really good. That movement inward was absolutely 100% action step, number one. 
So I, I find it crazy. And, and the fact that I didn't realize, I mean, I know I'm kind of action oriented, but I didn't realize how much I literally tied to myself of, well, when I know I can't not know, which means I can't not do anything about it. Well, if that's not true, when you know something, um, you don't necessarily have to take action on it. People don't take action on stuff all the damn time. And it's not just a procrastination thing. It's a legitimate, just because you know something that you, just because I know that I have this need doesn't mean I have to change my life in order to achieve that need. Because guess what? There's a bigger picture context too. There's multiple needs going on here. And when you're in relationship and different relationships, there's lots of dynamics in the family, at, in the workplace, in your life where you have to prioritize and where you have to be flexible and fluid about um, how you are able to live a fulfilling life by having your needs met. But also before that can even happen, you have to know what your needs are. And then you have to get good at articulating what those are, especially in relationship. So like, if you think about this, this is interesting. If you think about this in terms of a career or a job, because I think a lot of people are changing jobs right now or open to career changes or going back to college or, or, or being, just being open to promotions and different kinds of jobs than maybe two years ago we were. If you think about this in terms of job, like what do you need in a job? Like what do you need? Do you need flexibility? Do you need an adjustable schedule so that you can, you know, pick your kids up um, at the end of the day at the bus stop or, or be at home when the kids get home? Do you need to live in a certain location because it's closer to extended family? Maybe you have older parents that you kind of care for or that you want to be around. Um, maybe, maybe that's a factor for you. Um, do you need a work environment that's really super focused on uh, learning? like enhancing your skills, like maybe you're working computer programming and, and that's always a, a field that's constantly changing and always opportunity to learn new things, learn new things, learn new things and, and needing to do that in order to keep um, ahead of things and keep relative and relevant and marketable. And so maybe you need an environment that, that is really supportive, super pro, keeping learning on the cutting edge, new things, new things, new things. Maybe that's something that you need to have. So there's a whole host of things and, and areas that you can kind of identify needs and work with needs in, and maybe something like that, a little more um, less charged, like the work, work or career scenario might be less charged than like, say, your marriage. <laughs> that's, that, that's a little more charged, right? Or a personal relationship, like a romantic relationship versus a friendship, like in a friendship, what do you need? What are your needs as far as friendship goes, you know? And so like for me, it's like that responsiveness, that consistency, that communication, um, that kind of mutual understanding to be able to articulate needs and, and understand that you're not always gonna be available, but you're still there. Like your heart is connected kind of a thing, that level of support. So um, I think the needs thing is, is still, it's daunting to me and because I, I think it's because I feel like needs are your basics. I'm not even talking about your wants or desires. I'm talking about like your, this is what I need. I need to have this. Like I have to have this. I know because if I don't have this, I'm going to be miserable. And if I'm miserable, everything else in my life sucks. My relationships, my kids suffer, whatever, you know what I mean? So if I don't have this, then it's a problem. So for me too, like alone time is a big need. Like that's a non-negotiable. I need alone time. I need to have time to reflect. I need to have time to reboot. I need to have time to be totally away and separate from everybody and be like solo. And I like, I love that. You probably know if you watch my uh, Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel, you know that I do travel on my own a lot, probably four times a year or so. Um, I'll go different places and things and, and I love to travel solo and sometimes I travel like with my sister or that kind of thing. Now that my sister moved, I'll probably go travel to see my sister and then just chill by myself at her place and um, opportunity to like reflect and journal and go on walks and be in nature and just have different experiences, eat different kinds of foods, um, be in different environments, maybe listen to music, go to different venues and places, not necessarily a big nightlife kind of person, but maybe like a open mic night somewhere or listening to some, 
you know, great pian like piano music while, you know, having drinks or whatever it might be. I'm um, just kind of taking in the atmosphere of things and having different kinds of experiences. I really enjoy that, you know? So like, these are some things that are just basic needs. However, when you are in a relationship with someone else then, and you've identified your needs, you have to be willing to allow that other person to share their identified needs with you. And then to have conversation about how best to meet your needs, but not that somebody else has to, here's my list of needs. It's like a menu. Give this to me. I, here's my order and I give it to you and you have to fulfill those. No, but it's a good opportunity for conversation and recognition about how you are personally accountable to be your own voice, to speak up and to make plans to do those little trips or to, to make plans to make sure you get that sunlight, however that is, or have those warm, cozy slippers, you know, to have that, those blankets on hand to make sure things are warm and cozy, et cetera, et cetera, for example, right? As simple, sim simply put, a simple example. So yeah, so I'll have to see how this goes. Um, I'm just starting to work on this. I think it's a, a work in progress, a lifelong work, but it's something that I thought, Hey, I should share this with you guys because need is a big deal. It is a big, big deal. And it seems like the concept of need can be something that seems like a detriment or a, a flaw. Like if you have a need, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you enough just on your own? And why aren't you taking care of yourself? And wait a minute, you have a need? Yeah, well, we need each other to fulfill our needs. But, we, but then at the same time, we can't expect someone else just to magically know what those are and to magically meet them because it's on us to make sure that we put ourselves in positions in order to be able to get our needs met. And that's on us. We have to choreograph that. And part of that is articulating and communicating to ourselves through our first awareness about it, what those needs even are, what, what, what those even are and what that looks like for us. So interesting. Good conversation today, you guys. Good conversation about need. And I know you empaths. I know you'll appreciate this. So this is Bridget. Thanks so much for listening to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I look forward to continuing to connect with you. Check me out on Bridget Inspired on Instagram. Check me out at Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube and Above Life channel on YouTube as well. Yes, I am accepting new intuitive coaching clients. Yes, I'm an intuitive life coach. I'm also a psychic and a medium, and you can enjoy my psychic mediumship work on Above Life channel on YouTube for free because that's where I share my weekly channeling videos on Mondays. So make sure you check things out there. If you're interested in intuitive topics, tips, things like that about energy work, card readings, other psychic tools that I use, or my psychic vlog where I talk about my psychic life, check that out at Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. I hope I've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope and encouraged you to live your life. <laughs> it's your life after all. And you got to live it. So just live it. Thanks for listening.